dealing with the problem of sin. I know some of you pretend as if you don't know what is sin. We try to push it aside or give it a name, an alternative lifestyle or game. All kinds of fine definitions <laughs> so that we look fine. It will not be considered a sin. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, sin is sin. And he wants to destroy you and destroy me. Now, I'm preaching to the born again Christian. I believe you have been saved. I believe I have been saved. I'm born again. Tell your neighbor, I'm born again. But I still have a struggle. Don't worry, don't play. I still have a struggle in me. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Well, if you don't understand, you can understand from the experience of Paul, the apostle. Romans chapter 7. He said, the things I like to do, I find myself not having the strength to do them. And the ones I don't want to do, somehow something is moving me to do them. There is obsession. It comes in different ways. There are women here you can't do without shingum. No matter if your husband should even slap you three times, after you have taken holiday for about three weeks, you will go back. Because it's an addiction. It's a stronghold. I have taught you about that. We have mentioned then the stronghold of pride, the stronghold of bitterness, the stronghold of unforgiveness, the stronghold of cheating, the stronghold of using the back of the cup to measure beans for people. <laughs> Oh, you think it doesn't exist? It exists. The stronghold of selling second hand as new. And it will shock you, the people. Listen, if you go to the market and anybody is telling you, true to God, true to God, now the, now the cost price, now they give you so. Run for your life. He or she, whether it's a believer or not, is not telling you the truth because nobody is going to sell at cost price. They will always sell at cut truth. Are you hearing me? So be careful. There are strongholds in our lives, and you should be able to identify your the, I mean, you you will be stupid and foolish not to know your weakness. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you know even your weakness? Satan knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. And he's going to use it to destroy you. Are you listening to me? Don't play with it. Sometimes we underestimate the power of sin. We pretend as if it doesn't exist. It's in you. It's in me. And it's, if you do not do anything about it, it will destroy you. I don't forget buying Vanguard newspaper many years ago and the front page was a whole director of a company naked. And I said, how can this be? He went to chase the wife of his own employee. And the wife told the husband, look, your director is after me. And they planned for it. They got him at the time he entered the house, he already pulled his dress, the signal the husband and other people they came, and he was caught red-handed. They did not only beat him, but took his photograph and put it on front page of Vanguard or one of the papers. Look at your neighbor. Which paper do you want to appear in? Ask him or her. Listen, sin looks attractive. Sin will promise you a lot of things, but it has nothing to give to you. 
All that he has to give to you is disgrace, reproach, frustration, bitterness of heart, loneliness. Huh? He said, well, in this modern world, you cannot be a virgin. So if you be a virgin, you are a bush girl. So sleep with your boyfriend or somebody who is not your husband. Commit fornication or adultery and whatsoever. Everybody is doing it. Do I have any witness here? Have you heard that word? Everybody is doing it. But I will not do it. Tell your neighbor, everybody can do it. But not me. I have a covenant. And you have a covenant with God. Keep your consecration. Learn to understand the fall of all the men in the Bible and even in our modern day. Sometimes I sit back and still think, how could Jimmy Swaggart, with all that he had, fall into that sin? Not even sleeping with a woman, but just to look at the woman. I'm not justifying pornography. Were there no pornography? But he wanted live performance because the devil suggested that to his heart. You are tempted by your desires. Are you listening to me? What is your desire? That's what the enemy will use to tempt you and try to disgrace you. May God keep you safe and may the grace of God be available to you and myself. I say, may the grace of God be available to you and myself. Amen. Our society does not take sin seriously. We under, underestimate the power of sin. Are you following me? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Tell your neighbor, the way you are treating sin is too small. Why did the devil choose to use the, the snake to tempt the woman? Have you ever asked that question? Were there no other creatures? As we are seated here right now, no matter how small is the snake, physical snake, to enter this hall, you will not listen to me anymore. As it's moving around, all your legs will and you will climb the chair and if you can't climb chair, you will run for just a small snake how many of you will see a snake enter your house it has entered your house and you will go to bed and say it doesn't really matter, let me go sleep raise your hand, anybody? now that is physical all truth is parallel there is a snake inside you there is a spiritual snake inside you called sin. And it's out to destroy you. He's lying to you. He's telling you all kinds of lies. Because that's his weapon. To deceive you. To turn your heart against your God. What is his purpose of bringing all this stronghold and different things and temptation? Listen, temptation is not sin. It is yielding to temptation and falling into temptation that is sin. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, temptation is not sin. Everybody will be tempted. But it is the falling that is the problem. That's why Jesus prayed for Peter. He said, Satan has desire to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And that's why that John said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even, he said, everyone born of God has what? Overcome the world. Huh? And this is the victory. Say it, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Now you must have faith to believe. And believe what I'm preaching to you this morning. Because it's a serious matter. You are growing cold. You are getting involved in things. The things you didn't like before. Those things you used to hate. You are going back to them. 
you are beginning to like them. Big brother, a Christian watching big brother, you will become small brother. <laughs> what you watch matters. Are you listening to me? Don't tell me when pornography is on the screen or a nude picture is on the screen, then you will be speaking in tongue. You are a fool. Flee every appearance of evil. Know the channels to use or look in your house. You don't have money more than myself. Neither do you have the entertainment things more than myself. But they don't rule me. I rule them. Are you listening to me? I select the films I watch when I need to watch them. Because if I keep just reading Bible, Bible, Bible from Monday to Saturday, I will become a Pharisee. Oh yes, I will become Pharisee and sad, you see. So I balance my life. I am not ashamed to tell you, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. I can boldly tell you that because I will not lead you astray. If you see me stealing, go and steal. If you see me chasing other people's wife, go and chase ten. But by the grace of God, I have made up my mind from day one, from 1975, that no going back. I will serve him with my whole heart, with my whole spirit, and he will give me grace to serve him. Amen. God will not put chains on your leg and say, don't go and chase another man's wife. He will not put, you know, I have told you, I said, if Benson and Hedges, cigar, has leg, and he can walk to my room, I will smoke it. But how many of you know that's not possible? Come on, talk to me. How many of you know that's not possible? Because the cigar has no wealth, no leg. Somebody must walk to the kiosk where they are selling it and say they should do what? Sell for me. And some of you, your husband, you women, I'm not saying you should rebel, but I think the time has come to tell a guy, only you go and buy your bakara. Only you go and buy your cigar. Because it's a shame to go by himself. He will say, my wife, go buy a gogoro for me. And because you are afraid that they will divorce you or throw you away, you are doing all kinds of things. Some of you even follow your husband to native doctors. You are laughing. It's the fact. It's killing you. You are better than this. Look at your neighbor and tell him, oh, you are better than the way you are now. You are ignorant of the devices of the devil. That's why he's reducing you daily. And if he can reduce you spiritually, he will reduce you physically. Death is real. The day you eat the fruit of this, uh, the fruit of this tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. They, they believe that Eve and Adam had, they were thinking they would just die immediately but it was a gradual process and many of us are dying gradually because our soul is sinking may your soul be revived Amen. i said may your soul be revived Amen. how many of you can agree with me that the things you don't like to do they are most of the things you what you do anybody you don't agree how many of you have ever said this thing I did is very bad I will never do it again? Raise your hand. Raise your hand very high. Fine. But did you not do it last week? <laughs> you said you will not do it again. But you did it last week. You know why? Because sin has so much power and you don't know how to deal with it. But I will show you this morning. I say I will show you this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Say it after me. Be strong in the Lord. I want the church to vibrate and say, say be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. 
strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind. The next verse. All right. Put on what? The whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. God is teaching you how to deal with the power of sin. That is the greatest enemy you have. And it's in your flesh. And it's your flesh. And what is the flesh? The flesh is a mindset. Your way of thinking. Are you listening to me? There's nothing wrong with this in your body. It is your soul that is controlling it. Are you listening to me? When we're talking about flesh, it's not this physical body. We're talking about your way of thinking. The things you believe. What you are working on. What is occupying your time. What is in your mind. Every day. And they become strongholds. We said strongholds are mindsets and bad attitudes. And we have them. And the devil knows that your habits will determine your habitation. Listen, you don't die and just go to heaven. Your heaven starts the day you gave your life to Christ. And the way you conduct your life here will determine where you will spend eternity. Are you listening to me? So be careful the way you conduct your life. He said, it doesn't matter what I do. It, does, it matters. Why do you think gonorrhea exists? Why do you think there's syphilis? Why do you think all these sexual transmitted diseases are in place? They are to put a check and they are judgment against sin or sexual sin. You kiss somebody who is not your wife, you will have Ibeke. And you can never cure them. Your mouth will be... I hope I don't have Ibeke. I know I don't have, and I will never have, because I have only one mouth that I kiss. Look at all the men around you and tell them, draw water from your own well. Some of you are thinking of how to run from this service now. You say, I thought pastor will come today and jump around and preach to me. The Lord will open a new door before you. He will open a new door before you when you have dealt with your sin. If you will be diligent and you will keep my commandment and obey me in everything, I will bless you. I will give the numbers of your days. I will do what? I will fulfill. I will bless your bread and your water and anything you need. Are you listening to me? What is killing you and killing me is sin. Let's not hide it. It has so much power. But somebody came and it took about more than 2,000 years ago. The Son of God was made manifest and he went to the cross and he destroyed Satan and his cohorts and he spoiled the power of sin and conquered sin, conquered death, conquered everything that will work against you. And you are ignorant of the redemption that has been paid or the price of redemption. And as long as you are not conscious of the cross, you will walk in your sin. Because God has taken your sins and has nailed them to the cross. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Put it on the screen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Help me. Alright? And everybody read it loud. And they that are Christ. And they that are in Christ have what? Have crucified the flesh. They crucified their flesh with the what? Affections, Affections and, lust. and lust. What is lust? Lust comes as a result of desire. When desire something you are longing for, you want to have it. I must get it at all costs. I must get it at all costs. Have you seen people who are victims? Of drugs, especially cocaine or hard drugs, when the thing comes on there, they can't sleep. They become violent. Their hands are trembling and shaking, uncontrollable. They want to lose their mind because that's what you know. Listen, for every sin you practice, 
Satan will send a demon to reinforce it so that it becomes difficult for you to stop it. But whether you know it or not, it has been crucified. I say it has been crucified. Shout aloud the thing that have been troubling me and still troubling me have been crucified with Christ on the cross. I'm a musician. I love music. But before I became a Christian, I was already a musician and I also loved music. But I was not singing gospel songs. I was singing James Brown songs. Mr. Big Stuff and all kinds of things. A student that they are helping to go to school and give, pay his school fees, he will take money out of the school fees to buy a record. And I have all these albums. And we go to party, I bring my own. You bring your own, we start playing. I gave my life to Christ. Six months later, the stronghold of Mr. Big Stuff was still troubling me. I put it on in my uncle's parlor. Nobody at home. And I started playing. I started dancing. Boom, 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 you know? And as I was dancing, I danced to a point, sweating. Something tapped me. It may not happen to you, but you are hearing my testimony. And my testimony should help you. And he said, John, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. All things become new. You are now a new creature. No longer Mr. Big Star. Go and look for amazing grace. And I took the hymn. I joined the church. I entered the church. Church of God Mission at the Junior Street. And I started singing Amazing Grace how sweet the sun that saved a wretch like me I was but now was blind but now I see I just like that when my friends they come around me I open amazing grace Sometimes I will open on oh, war Christian soldier machine. <laughs> they say this one the crazy or what did they worry about? Listen, when they found that I was serious about following God, they all left me. Your bad friends will fall off if you stay in Christ, if you are consistent, if you are truly determined. How many of you are determined to remain? True believers that will make heaven, that will go to heaven. Put down your hand. How many of you are ready to die for what you believe? Stand on your feet. You are ready to die as a believer because of, if they put gun on your head and say, are you a Christian or Muslim? What are you going to say? You sure? You don't know whether I have gone here. <laughs> Sit down. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord protect you. The Lord uphold you. Sin is the internal. Write this down. Sin is the internal enemy of our development. Whether in Nigeria, whether in America, whether any place, sin is the enemy of our in of our development. That's the truth. Now our politicians are fooling themselves. Paying people to get votes. How long will you do that? Then you get to power. And your mentality is that when you get to power, you start stealing government money. And enrich yourself. You don't even sit down that with all your billions... Your heart can stop beating one day. There is no amount of wuru wuru you put together and add them and add them and add them that will turn 
to righteousness or become just. Wuru wuru plus wuru wuru equals. That's what you must understand. And God has put principle in place. What you sow is what you are going to reap. Let that be your guiding principle. That what you send out is what you are going to get. Are you listening to me? I am 68 years old. Last January. By coming January, I will be what? 69. Another one, I will be. So a man who is almost 70 talking to you, you think he's a child? I have experienced these things and I have seen that the word of God in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you. I'm experiencing it now. I started seeking God when I was at the age of probably 17. I still seeking and running after him. And God saw, by the grace of God, how faithful and how I love him and running after him. My reward is beginning to come. They don't know what I'm talking about. Those things you have been running after, when I was busy running after God, God now beginning to overtake you and putting them in my life and you are jealous of me. By the time I was seeking God, you were seeking women. You were seeking money. You were running after cars. You were running after... Now cars are going to be running after me. Somebody will drive a car to this church. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell her. He will drive it here and put the key in my hand. Pastor, I just wash you. I just look at you. And I felt something said, buy him a car. I know you have car, but add it to anything. Anything you want to do with it. In this life, I have sat in my house and I receive a lot. I won't tell you how much. Why? I have been young and now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will bring you there. You will not beg bread. I say you will not beg bread. You will not borrow before you eat. But the secret is for you to be rooted in God and hate sin. Just as your God hates it. You are not perfect. I am not perfect. But God knows. Why did God? How can God? When we get to heaven, don't you think we should ask him? How can God tell a man? Who slept with, you know, he committed adultery. Another man's wife killed the husband, took the wife, killed other people, trying to cover his sin. And God said, This man is a man after what? Is it fair? <laughs> but God saw something that you did not see. David got to a point when he had that experience. He said, never again. Everybody shouted, never again. Never again. And he meant it. And he started walking in that path. Because of his humility. And God covered him. Until tomorrow he's covered. There's no day you will not read the book of Psalm. Except you are not reading the Bible. You will. If you are looking for the Lord is your shepherd, where are you going to see it? If you are looking for the Lord is your refuge, where are you going to see it? If you are looking for his your hiding place, where are you going to see it? If you are looking for his your provider, where are you going to see it? The, man, the, God, the God you serve will satisfy your mouth with tozo. Where, where is it written? All the good things, they are in the psalm. Because he experienced God. May you experience God. And may you love God. And you love him with all your heart. 
I'm not talking about struggling physically now. Let God open your eyes. Let God do a work in your life. Are you listening to me? The whole armor of God you need to put on, which is the greatest of all, that even covers all, is the word of God. Take now the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. And you are going to do war. I say you are going to do war. Go now to Psalm 119. Go to Psalm 119. From verse 9. Where with that shall a young man cleanse his Look at the question David is asking. Where with that shall a young man cleanse what? His way. In other words, how can I stay away from Read it. By taking, by taking it there to according to thy word. By drinking five bottles of coke and one meat pie. Is that what he's saying? What did he say? By taking heed, how? There to according to thy word. Uh -huh. With Read my own one. heart, uh -huh. have I sought thee. How, what did he say? With my whole heart. What did he say, church? With my whole heart. Oh, half-heartedly. Never serious. Look at choir, now two rows. Last, the other Sunday before now, you occupy three rows. What happened? Where are the rest? Where are they? If you are a chorister in the church, raise your hand. You are a chorister, raise your hand. You didn't robe. Raise your hand. Stand on your feet. How can you be choir and you don't want to practice? You don't want to come to choir practice and you want to sing on something? Are you a wish? You may say, I have, uh, what's that? I'm talking practical. It doesn't work. Some of you, you listen, if we were in the Old Testament, majority of us would don't die, if we don't go. But thank God for grace. But Paul said in Romans chapter 6, shall we continue in sin so that grace, what did he say? Tell your neighbor, be serious with God. Be serious with your following him. Serve him faithfully and fervently and you will be rewarded. Your coming to this place is not to bless me. Your coming to this place is to bless you. Are you listening to me? Your life, this is the guarantee of your life. This is the assurance of your life. Take this out, your life is useless. Read on. Verse 10. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Uh -huh. Thy word have I hid in let my heart. Let everybody shout out loud. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Uh -huh. That I might not sin against thee. That I might not what? Sin against thee. Because when the enemy comes with a lie, the truth will sustain you. And you will know the truth. And the truth you know will set you free. Amen. What did Jesus use in conquering and overcoming temptation? It is the word of God. When the devil said, you know, change stone to bread. What did he say? He quoted the word. Man shall not live by what? By bread alone. But by what? By every word of God. Trust in the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will do what? Direct your path. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be given to you. Is the word in you? Do you have the word of God in you? That will correct you? That will help you to know the truth. You can easily be deceived. Listen, you are not as old as the devil. The devil is wiser than all of us. Including myself. And he can deceive all of us. Are you listening to me? He can make something that is 
good and turn into bad. Sex is good. Sex is designed purposely not just for pleasure, but that's what brought you to this life. How many of you know it was sex that brought you to this life? If your mother and father didn't have sex, there's no way you would be here this morning listening to me. So it's for procreation. But the devil is twisting it and say anything you see, sleep with. To the extent that some are sleeping with animals. That's what's happening. That's where you have homosexuals. That's where you have lesbians. That's where you have there are even those I don't know the English name they will use for those who are sexing themselves by themselves. Any any PhD holder that will help me? <laughs> All kinds of nasty things. I want to provoke you this morning that when you see sin, you will hate it. Can I hear amen? amen. Corrupt society from our head to our toe. No sadness, but sadness will come. Nigeria will be delivered yeah. but not in my generation that may shock you I study I read and I listen to God not in my own generation you say are you going to die soon no I'm not dying soon I still have more years to go but not in my generation you know why because we have blockheads Those who hate iniquity, they are only about 5%. As I'm shouting and preaching to you now, and everything and whatsoever, if they offer and start offering me my prize or what I'm looking for, I'm not going to preach again. No? Instead of me preaching, I will start stammering. Um, uh, uh. Where, which book did I say you should even open? <laughs> you know? Because I'm guilty. You will be a fool to be guilty of something and you are preaching against the thing. People who know your yash and they know your secret. As you are preaching, they are doing No, no. Or better. I did tell them. A bit while I drink my and I be motto de boy. Mem Larry. I did branch he hotel now. Milk was he hotel now, mean you mira. But by war an hour. I hope what far call your pump. A pop run, I call cook bear. Hey, hey, memera. Hotel attendance, get ready. And in the FBI, we're going to be here. And in the Finally, they opened the door. The man came out sweating. They saw them. And they are caught. That is the end of your honor in Ugele. That is the end of your integrity or beauty in this earth. Listen, when you take the bile of an animal and you are not careful to cut it out, when it spills over the meat, the whole meat will be what? Sin is a bar and you must walk against it. Stand on your feet. I say, stand on your feet. Finally, I want to show you more secrets. Apart from using the word of God to be in your heart, to be able to stand against the wise of the devil, you must learn sanctification. You must have an understanding that your salvation is in three phase. It's a three phase meter. Number one, you have been saved by grace. Number two, you have been saved 
And the work of sanctification is in Romans chapter 6. Put Romans chapter 6 on the screen, verse 1, from verse 1. And we are going to be reading. But listen to me carefully. You are not where you are supposed to be yet. You are not what you are supposed to be yet. But you are going to be what God wants you to be. No, they didn't hear me. I say, whether the devil likes it or not, you will get there. I say, whether the devil likes it or not, you will get there. Because as he is, raise your hand and say, as he is, so am I in this world. You are complete in him. You have been justified. You have been accepted in the beloved. You have been chosen. Your sins have been forgiven. Everything you need to know about who you are, they are in Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 2. Read them. What you are, what you have. Huh? There's a scripture. Is it in 1 Peter or 2 Peter? That we are reigning in life as kings and queens and, you know, he has recorded us through his word and, you know, the scripture is there, but I'm not quoting it correctly. Any smart person will get it for me. You, huh? No, 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 not children generation. I can get it for you, but I don't have time for that. Go and look for it. He's talking about you are begotten by the word of God and you are now a new creature and you are a partaker of the new nation. Amen. All right? Don't occupy your mind with that. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. I'll get it for you. Don't worry. Are you in Romans chapter 6? Yes, sir. Start reading. What shall we say then? All of us. Let's read it. Sha shall we say then? Uh -huh. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Stop there. What led to this question is in chapter 5. The last part of chapter 5. We are some... We are now teaching wrong doctrine because of the grace of God. Because the Bible said, where sin abound, grace much more abounded. So some took it and said, well, if that is the case, the more sin I commit, the more grace I'm going to have. So no problem. You see why you people? <laughs> and Paul said, shall we then continue in sin so that grace we are bound. Look at the answer. Read on. God forbid. God forbid. Yes. How shall we that and are look dead at to you? Sin. Look at you. He say, How shall what? How shall we that are dead to sin? Uh huh. Live any longer therein. Did you hear that? You are dead to what? To sin. Who is dead to sin? Uh -huh. The believer is dead to sin. And how? Through the death of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died, you died with him. Say, when Jesus died, I died with him. When he rose again, I rose with him. So I'm dead to sin and alive unto God. Read on. I no longer live in sin. Read on. Know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into The baptism he's talking about here is not water baptism. He's talking about your new birth. He's talking about your regeneration of your recreating of your new spirit. Are you listening to me? Because God said in Ezekiel 36, 26, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And the old stony heart will be removed. And I believe that will be removed from me. I don't know about you. My own don't come out to. Do you see have it? Say the old man have been removed. He's still there, but I don't live according to his dictates. I don't listen to him because I've been recreated. And my new nature is longing after righteousness, after God, after good things, after the Holy Spirit, desiring love, to walk in love, to have joy, to have peace, to have kindness, to have patience, to have self-control. Self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. So don't tell me, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. You don't have the spirit. If you are saying, I can't stop sin, it means you are in the first place, you are not a child of God. You can stop. If you want to stop. Are you listening to me? Look at your neighbor and tell you, you can stop. Oh, if you really want to stop. 
Because of time, run, run. Know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ uh -huh. were baptized into his death? Uh -huh. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. We are baptism. buried with him in baptism. Listen, all what you are reading, they are the work and operation of faith. If you don't believe it, it will never manifest in your life. But if you believe it, it will work. But if you are just church, churchianity, and church goer, and religious, this will not work for you. All that you'll be tell, you know, ringing in your mind is, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. What stops you from praying? Saint Paul, pray for us. Laziness. Paul is saying in heaven, I have finished my course. You continue your own. You pray. You say, I need old saint to pray for me. Those are religious spirits. And we don't need them here. I don't need it in my life. I have been delivered from that. Are you listening to me? All right? Some people may be offended by that, but that's their business. But I'm teaching you the truth. Faith works. Put your faith in the word of God and it will work. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that his word, that he is and is what? A rewarder of them that diligently. Faith is acting on the word of God. And may you have the faith that works. I say, may you have the faith that works. Read on. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by uh -huh. the glory of the Father, uh -huh. even so we also shall walk in newness of life. We will walk how? In newness, in newness of, of life. life. In heaven? No, here on earth. Come on. Is it in heaven that we will walk in newness of life? Where are we going to walk? Here on earth. When they give you change, listen. Please, all mothers here and fathers, wash your children. If you send them with money to go and buy anything, and the teen, maybe you gave them 500 naira, and the teen it was 300 naira, and they are not giving you change, don't be quiet. You are raising an arm robber. If you are quiet, are you listening to me? Ask him or her, where is mine? His face will change. Let his face change, but let him give you your. And some adults are also doing it. Because you grew up like that. Once they give you money, go and buy a social thing. And the exchange, you don't say to anybody, say, now this remain. Because you have been raised as an internal and home arm robber. But God will deliver you. Can I hear amen? amen. Faithfulness is what we need. Tell your neighbor, be faithful. Be honest. Have integrity. Read on. Time is not in my favor. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, mm -hmm. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Uh -huh. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified our with him. Our old man has been what? Crucified with him. That the body Wait, of sin. Meaning. Let's ask them. Dead man, they shot your love rise. But much worry. Have you ever entered the much worry and all the corpses that they put there? They got up and started greeting you. Good morning, Jeanette. You come. Have you seen that? If that happens, they are not dead. What is he telling you here? Go to verse eleven. Likewise, reckon Look, pay you. Pay attention. Likewise, reckon you also Likewise, yourselves. Likewise, do what? Reckon you also yourselves. Just as the dead man cannot eat jollof rice, you who is not a new creature, you will not walk in sin. Sin shall not have the me. They are not hearing me. I said, sin shall not have dominion over you. Yeah. You will have dominion over sin. Yeah. All right? Reckon, reckoning. What does it mean to reckon? You consider yourself dead. Are you listening to me? My wife has been away almost a month now or so. 
It's not that they don't have passion. It's not that they don't have desire. When the desire for me, for her, comes, physical intimacy, I say, my wife not there around. Bible, music, play. I govern, listen, Satan will bring thoughts to your mind, but the thoughts you do not act on will die a natural death. Lift up your hands to heaven. I surrender. I surrender. Sing it. I surrender. Everybody stand up and sing it. All to Jesus. Blessed Savior. I surrender. somebody present with you always is God the Holy Spirit is God the Father is Jesus himself there is nothing hidden from him are you listening to me deal with sin before it deals with you are you listening to me because if you just treat it with kiss glove it will massacre you and destroy you. This is what is responsible for death. That's why humanity is still dying. 